Sony viewers, I am DS, your psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. This episode is probably going to be the most intriguing and controversial episode of all times. I promise you that. So this episode is probably going to be a precursor for this channel to turn towards the dark side. I am going to disclose certain things about myself. So I'm going to tell you a story. In this story, there are a lot of facts. But whether this story is really true is up to your discretion. So let's start with the story. So I actually have four legal names and that is true. A legal name is one whereby you go to the lawyer to get it legally changed. Why would a person need to have so many legal names? The answer to this can be actually very surprising. It has to do with black magic. Yes. When I was six years old, my grandfather handpicked me to be his successor. My grandfather is a sorcerer, a black wizard, a black magician. In Chinese, they call it a wu shi. Now, my grandfather has so many different grandchildren. Why did he choose me? He said that I was the chosen one. Now, to think about it, when I look at all my cousins, it's probably a very good choice because I am the only TE user and I'm a TE dom. Which means to say, if my grandfather had to impart black magic to me, I will be the one who is not hesitant to use it. I have no qualms casting spells on others. So if you are looking for a successor, you want this trait, you want this skill to keep on going on, right? So my grandfather was 93 years old when he actually imparted his skills to me. But he left about two years later. So my grandfather is a very competent black magician. He knows all sorts of black magic. But I think he couldn't wait any longer. I was six years old then, but he thought that I was ready for it. So the first thing that he thought was the most potent one, the ability to reduce the life of other people. So this might sound a little bit technical. He taught me how to loosen the silver cord, which is this imaginary lining that connects your body, your physical body to your soul. Anyway, channel name viewers, I may be talking bullshit now, but listen to the story. I'm going to tell you more and then you decide for yourself whether this is true or not. So a lot of the things that I'm telling you are facts. So I am repeating, I have four legal names in my entire life up to now, and it is true. Of course, my grandfather also knew other black magic spells such as protection, which is very important for any sorcerer, but he did not have enough time to actually impart all these skills to me. But I think that the skill that he has passed to me is one of the best. I think of all the repertoire of black skills that he knows, I would have definitely chosen this one, the ability to reduce the life of other people cut their lifespan by about two, three years, I'm happy. So when I was eight years old, I felt ridiculously sick. It was very, very bad. I almost died. My grandfather said that it was because I had accumulated too much life that I have taken from other people. Who are these other people? I will not say. It's a trade secret. So I told you I almost died yet. So what's the solution? The solution is very simple. Create a new identity. Go and change a name. So I changed my name when I was eight years old to another name, assuming a new identity. So it can be very confusing, but conceptually, the old self dies alongside the name change and the life is disposed. So I have a new name, but because I keep doing black magic, even after my grandfather has passed away, I had to change my name again when I was 19. And the last time I ever changed my name was when I was 32. Now I'm going to present to you four different propositions that support this notion that I am actually an evil black magician. The first one is very obvious. Why would any sensible, sane person ever have to change the name four times? And especially one that is changed at eight years old. So the potential boss might be asking, why do you have so many names? So I have found this to be a very inconvenient part of the entire storyline. Luckily, I am now my own boss. I don't have to look for a job anymore. So another thing is, I have been telling Channel 8 viewers that I come from a gambling family, right? So in fact, actually, my gambling family business is really big, but we have never been caught by the police ever before. Why? That is because my grandfather knows the spell of protection. We are well protected. 
So do I know anything about protection? My grandfather may not have taught me, but it doesn't mean that I do not know. So the third thing that can support the notion that I take lives away from others is that of my looks. I'm actually very, very old, but I look much younger than my actual age. Why? Because this is a result of absorbing youth from other people. So the fourth proposition that I actually know of to support the notion that I have killed a lot of people in this sense is that actually I am really very talented. I have also been handpicked by a famous tarot reader in Singapore to do white magic, which is to read tarot cards. So my grandfather is right. I'm very talented occultish wise. In any case, my grandfather should be very proud of me because not only am I good in black magic, I can also do white magic. Of course, I can also be talking bullshit here. Now, first of all, I have actually got a very high IQ compared to the general population. My IQ has been tested and it was 153 at one point in time. So I could have devised this scheme since long, long ago. As a lot of my viewers would have known, ENTJs can actually be very visionary. I may have planned this for a very long time and now I am releasing this episode just to scare people, perhaps. The second thing is a lot of people know that I'm a psychologist. In fact, I graduated from the top university in Singapore as a top student. My model grade, which means the grade that I got as the most common grade is actually A+. A+. I really am very good with manipulating people and making people frightened if I had wanted to. So actually, by some strange incident, I have actually really changed my name four times. But it's not because I knew black magic. But because of my weird thinking and intelligence, I devised something that seemed like real. In fact, point number three might support this. I only started posting weird messages of me killing people on my Facebook since 2011. Why wait until 2011 to say such things? Like, thank you for giving me your life. Some messages like that in my Facebook is true. Now, this may be a little bit curious. Why am I producing this episode at all? There are three reasons for this. One, I have really started to leak information for a very long time that I may have performed black magic on people. Given that in the future, as a social media influencer, one day I may become really famous. So people might start to attack me. Why don't I just flash out all the cards and admit that, yes, this could be true, but it may also not be true. What can you do about it? If you want to say that I've actually done something wrong, I say that maybe I'm really smart. I came up with this idea. So who can prove who is right? You can't. The second reason why I'm producing this episode is for protection, of course. In the future, there will be a lot of people coming my way. I will tell them, straight away to watch this video if they really want to work with me and if they dare to betray me i will take away some years of their lives anyway as an entj we do not kill indiscriminately that's for a fact only if you have bullied us cheated on us then will we ever do anything bad to you also one word of reminder you can offend any tom dick or harry don't offend a wizard. So well, there's a very strange third reason for doing this episode. It's called livelihood. Who knows, after this entire video blows up in the future, I may be known for the wrong reasons. I can even write a book on this. How I killed different people or the men with four different names. So I think that this book has a potential of being a bestseller. <sighs> Talking about visionary, right? So in a lot of my previous episodes, I have really made an attempt to be really nice. But following my FI grip, I have realized that sometimes being too nice doesn't do anything. So you ask any ENTJ and this is true. We would rather be villains than to be mediocre. And here I am. I'm going to play the villain. So for all of you, whether you have offended me intentionally or unintentionally, watch out. Okay, I think that some of the viewers might be shocked, but if you are a true blue ENTJ, you would not feel shocked at all. It's very typical of an ENTJ. <laughs> okay, I am going to sign off now, and I'll see you in our next episode. Goodbye.